2012 Sprint Cup champion Brad Keselowski here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Brad? Great. Go Blue. Go Blue. Back at you, Brad. Go Blue right back at you. I'm so glad you called because I've got, I've got sort of a little bit of a Michigan Big Ten conundrum on my hands that I'd like you to help me with. Let's okay, Brad? Let's hear it, Rich. I'm putting How you, can I help you? Okay, thank you. I'm putting you, if you will, behind the steering wheel of the situation. Um, okay. Coach Harbaugh, who you know uh, walks on water, um, <laughs> he was on this show a couple of weeks ago and kindly invited me to be the honorary captain for week two, Central Florida at Michigan at the Big House. Which, you wow. know, uh, yeah, right? I couldn't, I, I'm very excited about this. Now, my two producers here, both named Chris, uh, one of whom is a hollow shell of a man, but he's a Syracuse guy, so he's harmless. <laughs> the other man is a Penn State honk who loves trolling on Michigan as much as possible, and it appears I'm plus one. I'm plus one for this event on the sideline passes. Who do I choose, Brad, to go with me? Whoa. I think the Syracuse guy. Okay. Yeah, uh, I go with Syracuse. I, you know, I like Syracuse. You know, I got a lot of respect to their program. And not that I don't like Penn State. Penn State's all right. But, I mean, Syracuse. Sounds okay. like a guy that doesn't like competition. I was I always was a Bush fan anyway. Uh oh, look out. <laughs> look out now. He, he's just validating everything I said. That's just that's just Chris getting loose right there on that turn. You know? Right. Uh, yeah. yeah just... Be careful, you're gonna wreck yourself, Chris. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. How so how fired up are you about the Harbaugh era, uh, Brad? Or are you one of those cause you're you know, you're you're a Michigan guy from from birth, from what it sounds like to me. Uh, they're ranked seventh overall, and normally that gets me a little bit nervous when I hear people thinking that Michigan's good. What do you think, Brad? Yeah, um, well, they've got a lot of reason to feel good about how they finished uh, last year with, of course, bowl game success, but uh, not the, the victory in Ohio State that everybody really uh, judges a Michigan season by, and really both team seasons by. Mm -hmm. So I would say that there's a, a lot of optimism. I really like how they finished out last year with uh, – with Jake Rudock, and of course now he's gone. He's uh, got drafted by the Detroit Lions, so glad he's still kind of in the state. But I'm really curious about the quarterback situation. Really curious about uh, Jabril Peppers. He was a great player there at the end of the year, and there's a lot of buzz around him. And of course, uh, to finish off the, the the question marks for me is, you know, they brought the number one recruit in the nation uh, into the program, and I'm really curious about him to, to see how long it takes for him to to show up at that level. So I think there's a lot of question marks, but you know what, what team at this point in the season doesn't have a lot of yeah, question marks. Exactly. Exactly. So how did you become a Wolverine instead of a Spartan being from Rochester? That's a good Hills. question. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, we were a house divided. So my mom's side of the family, uh, to put it in context, literally my cousin was Brutus the Bruck guy. He was literally, that's what? how Ohio State ingrained <laughs> my mom's side of the family. Born and raised just south of Columbus, uh, and and my mom, of course, met my dad in Michigan, uh, and we live in Michigan. And, uh, my dad's side of the family, diehard University of Michigan Wolverine fan. So, dad's side won out. We still have a heck of a Thanksgiving, I can tell you that. There's a lot of uh, obscenities because that's usually right at the time the game is played. Yeah. And, you know, the last few years uh, haven't been as much fun at Thanksgiving as, as there used to be when I was uh, – a little bit younger and in the 90s, but wow. still, it's a, it's a healthy rivalry. And, and you know, to, to put it all in perspective, my brother ended up a Spartan fan. So, wow, we got a little bit of it all mixed yeah, in. Yeah, you spread it all out there. Brad Keslowski oh, joining me out. here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So, what would it mean for you to win in Michigan this weekend? What would that mean for uh, you? You know, I think for a race car driver, there there's some wins that stick out, um, and, and I think. Probably most of your listeners have, have heard of, you know, the Daytona 500. They've heard of the Indianapolis 500. Sure. Uh, and those those races pay a lot of money to win. There's a lot of prestige. There's a lot to be thankful and proud of uh, when you win those races. But I think every driver would tell you, and that's not from Daytona or from Indianapolis, that winning in their home state, winning at their home track, is a lot like winning one of those big races as far as the, the feeling that you get personally. And so I would say that it would be as big to me as winning the Daytona 500. Um, you know, it's, it's my home track. It's where I'm from, it's, uh, where I relate to not just my family, but a lot of friends and, and, and sponsors. And uh, there's just so much that Michigan means to me 
that a win there would be uh, of tremendous proportion to me. Well, I mean, and, and I imagine that's got to help with, you know, three races to go in the regular season and you, uh, you know, you're in, you've been in for quite some time into the, uh, the playoffs right now. I mean, how do you like this format? How do you and your colleagues like the current format that's now in its second year? In uh, NASCAR, I think we're all trying to trying to get a feel for it. So I think to explain maybe to some of the, the casual listeners out there, you know, the chase is essentially NASCAR's version of the playoffs. Uh, and to get in it, there's really two ways you can get in. You can be super consistent and finish uh, up towards the top in points, or you can win races and just be within the top 30 drivers in the nation. Uh, so if you get a win early in the season, you're essentially locked in as long as you just keep racing and don't do anything foolish. So uh, we did win early in the season in Las Vegas, which is a good feeling. Uh, kind of the issue that I have with the system in general, though, is if you win early in the season, all you do is don't do anything foolish for the next probably four or five months. And, you know, I want to race. I want to compete. I just want to go hard. And so to kind of be somewhat stuck in idle is probably something that I don't like about the format. But then when the playoffs come, uh, you know, which we call the chase uh, in the middle of September, uh, it's a completely different format. It's a completely different feel, uh, and the intensity ramps up, and, and you can feel it uh, in yourself. You can feel it in the, in the whole community. So uh, the NASCAR community, it's uh, two different seasons is what it is, and parts of it I like, parts of it I don't like. Brad Keselowski joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And what about the criticism that I hear, and you may hear too, that, that, that NASCAR isn't the old paint swapping in your face, screaming and yelling at each other, throwing helmets – that a lot of people really like that era of NASCAR, that it's not that way anymore. And that, that, yeah. what do you think yeah, about I that? I remember, part? you know, in the nineties, when I was a kid growing up, I used to hear from fans all the time, how the seventies were so much better. Those guys were real tough guys. And these <laughs> guys today are limps. And now today you hear about, you know, is, is LeBron as good as Michael Jordan? No, those guys, Michael Jordan in his day was way tougher. It seems like there's always some revisionist uh, history and theory to, uh, to any and all sports, and NASCAR is no different. So you don't want to get out and throw your helmet at somebody after they say get loose in a turn and knock you out of Bristol, something like that, Brad? Well, I'm not sure I understand what throwing a helmet at a guy does, but I can tell you, Rich, that I'm not afraid to rub fenders or to uh, – you know, push around or, or even be pushed around a little bit on the racetrack. I think that's good racing. It always has been and always will be. So then what constitutes a dirty driver? <laughs> that's a matter of perspective. Yeah, that's a very good question. What's it? What is a dirty driver? I think um, someone that will intentionally uh, wreck someone uh, without good reason or merit. That's That to me is falls in that context. But I couldn't tell you that I have the perfect... Uh, explanation towards it okay so uh you don't mind swapping paint you don't mind you know getting in somebody's face is there is there somebody in particular on the uh on the the circuit that uh that brings that out of you more than anybody you know, people else people ask me all the time who's my biggest rivalry rich mm -hmm. and i would tell you hands down that i try not to think of one person and i will always answer it the same way it's the car in front of me Mm -hmm. If I'm not leading the race and you're the car in front of me, mm -hmm. you're my rival. That's all I and, and I think when you get caught up in one guy, that there's 40 other guys out there you got to be, or really 39 because you count yourself. Mm -hmm. If you get caught up in one guy, you forget about the other 38. Mm -hmm. And so I try really hard not to do that. And uh, now that you have a kid, has that changed anything for you? With you know, obviously Dale Jr. and his concussions. Uh, this year is his concussion that uh, has essentially knocked him out of the year and him uh, thinking long term as opposed to short term to try and get into the chase this year. Has having a kid at all changed your philosophy, Brad? Well, life's about change. You know, you're not the same person at uh, 20 that you were when you were 17. And you're not the same person at 30 that you were at 25. And sometimes that's good. And some ways, uh, when you get to 40, you probably think, man, I wish I was 30 and <laughs> had all that flexibility and strength. But, uh, you know, I, I think that you probably change sometimes and don't know you change. I don't feel much different after, you know, being a father. Uh, but I feel um, maybe a little bit more mature. I don't feel less risk adverse. I'm still out there racing as hard as I can and trying to win races. I can promise you that. But I think at time to time, you know, when the race is done, you, you think about those things. And 
a guy like uh, Dale who has, you know, been blessed with a, a really good life, and uh, he's got uh, incredible uh, people around him right now. Uh, you know, those are questions that you're going to ask yourself a little bit louder when you get older, and I um, certainly don't think I'm going to be any exception to it. Well, look, good luck to you. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, our conversation here. Good luck to you when you get in the chase. And then, uh, you know, it does appear that that final race in Miami is the day after the Michigan-Ohio State game, Brad. So perhaps is we... Is it really? Yes, it does appear to be the case. So uh, what I think I need from you is uh, to have you come on uh, the day after to celebrate your championship and uh, celebrate a Michigan win over Ohio State. What do you think about that That'd idea? Great. I, I might have a, a beer or two with you. Okay. Uh, while that's going, if, if that's the case. Okay. Well, look, go blue to you. Thank you for helping me with my conundrum of my plus one for the uh, second week of the season in the big house. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, no problem. No problem. Sorry if I hurt anyone's feelings. I'm <clears throat> Penn State. Don't, but, uh, yeah. All good. It's, it's just the way it is. Man. It's all good. We And, and we, we always highly respect anybody who's been in Sharknado 3 as well, Brad. So you've got a home. <laughs> you've got a home here. Yeah, heck of an acting career I've got. Oh. But uh, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. It's been a good life. Yeah, it sure has. We'll chat soon, Brad. Okay. Thanks. thanks guys. That's uh, Brad Keselowski here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.